Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another video. So in this video, I want to talk about some big changes that I've made in terms of shipping my frags. But before we do that, if you want to help support the channel and pick up some SPS frags, please visit reefbum.com. With that, let's get into the video. All right, so what changes have I made to the way I ship out frags overnight to customers? And, and the reason why I made these changes is because the carrier that I use, UPS, has become just a little less reliable than they had in the past. You know, since the um, pandemic had started, every now and then I've had a package that has not arrived next day air, you know, the next day, but after two days. So, you know, years ago, I never had these kind of issues with UPS. I'd used FedEx before, and I found FedEx to be terribly unreliable. And then I switched to UPS and they were really, really solid. But on that rare occasion, on that rare occasion, UPS has not delivered on their promise to deliver packages to customers that I've had on the next day. So I really wanted to make, you know, my methods more bulletproof to really increase the likelihood that anything that I ship that is gonna get delayed by more than a day can survive. So I talked to a number of folks, including Chris Meckley at ACI Aquaculture, Adam from Frag Garage, and Ty from Farmer Ties Frags, just to kind of get an idea what, what those folks do in terms of shipping out stuff overnight. So I want to thank them for all the information. And yeah, so I, I kind of gathered that info and employed their uh, tactics in terms of how I ship stuff out these days. But you know, what I had been doing was using a vacuum sealer, so vacuum sealing plastic bags with frags and not allowing any air to get into those bags. And I would use a heat pack when necessary. I, um, I had not been using any cold packs, and I just pretty much avoided shipping when the uh, temperature was like 90 plus degrees any place. But that's changed. I've actually changed that in terms of using cold packs. So. What, uh, what I learned is that if you add oxygen, if you add oxygen to the um, bags with the frags in it, that will certainly help increase the odds. And here is my oxygen setup. I've got th this is the oxygen tank right here, and I've got this um, regulator and nozzle. So it's a 20-pound um, container, I believe, of oxygen. So I, uh, yeah, I inject oxygen into every bag. And instead of a vacuum sealer, I am using this uh, device, this uh, bag sealer. I don't know if that's exactly what it's called or not. It, um, it's pretty solid and it's got uh, clips in it. So they're, uh, it's basically like stapling up the, uh, the plastic bags. So I, I like it a lot more. I, I, I use, um, you know, a decent amount of water in each bag. And what I also do is I add in a, um, a few pieces of activated carbon, which if the uh, shipments are delayed and the, um, you know, bacteria starts dying off and there's toxins in the water with the frags, then the activated carbon will help absorb some of those toxins. So I had to spend a little money, you know, I, I made an investment. The, um, the oxygen setup, you know, it's not cheap in terms of buying that tank and the regulator and the, uh, the nozzle right there. That bag sealer was not cheap either. That's cheap. Activated carbon's pretty cheap. <laughs> so uh, I, I wanted to make an investment. I wanted to really ensure that I don't have any issues if UPS delivers a, um, a pack to a customer a couple of days late. And so I ran my own little experiment. I did, um, I pulled some frags out of my frag tank and I, um, I did an experiment over time. So I, I had um, one set of frags. I used three different types of um, 
frags, three different types of uh, coral frags for, um, for each of these different uh, experiments. And uh, I had, you know, the same frags I put in a vacuum sealed bag without any air, without any oxygen, without any activated carbon. Then I put them in the um, vacuum sealed bags with activated carbon, no oxygen. Then I did a, um, a bag with the bag sealer right here and I ejected oxygen, right? Okay, so then we've got bags with this bag sealer with oxygen. And then I had a whole nother set of frags that I used to, um, I, I put oxygen in those bags as well as activated carbon. And I kept the, um, all these bags in my basement here, which, uh, you know, the temperature is probably like around 70, 72 degrees or something like that. So temperature was not a factor in these experiments. And, and what I found is for, for some of these frags, after five days, after five days in these bags, the bags that were injected with oxygen and activated carbon, nearly all the frags survived and um, in the vacuum sealed bags there were some frags that actually lasted up to three days but um, there were some that died after a day a couple of days but i think the big takeaway for me is that the frags that were injected with oxygen as well as that you know also had activated carbon inside um, survived the most so temperature though i think plays a big big role in shipping and the fact that it was about 70 degrees, you know, in my basement while I did this experiment over that uh, five day period, the fact that some of the frags in the vacuum sealed bag survived, I think was due to temperature. When, when you start getting into extremes with temperature, then, um, you know, I think all bets are off. But, you know, that's a whole nother thing too, in terms of using the right amount of, um, you know, heat, you know, whether you're using one heat pack, two heat packs, if you are shipping, in the cold and like I said um, I'm, I'm not sure if I did mention it but I am now using cold packs and you know you just have to be smart I do a lot of research in terms of the weather both on my end and as well as on the customers end and then what I also do is I research the uh, the weather forecast I look at the weather forecast for the hub between myself and the customers uh, destination city you know so what I found out is that I live in Vermont, and when I ship out west, the frags will typically, you know, typically go through Louisville, Kentucky. So I'll look at that forecast. If there's like a lot of thunderstorms in the forecast, you know, um, in Louisville, Kentucky, I'll uh, I'll hold off on shipping. And you know, I always appreciate customers who have that um, understanding and are flexible in that regard. So you know, if it's um, so super hot. I'll um, I'll hesitate. You know, I've shipped frags in the lower 90s, and the mid 90s, without any issues using the cold packs. And um, but you know, it starts getting close to 100. Even though I think I could probably do it, I uh, I do hold off. So yeah, looking at the weather forecast and and making sure that I'm not shipping in any extreme temperatures. You know, likewise in the winter time, I think it uh, it makes sense not to be shipping when it's sub sub freezing temperatures out there. So, you know, that's, that's uh, one thing that uh, I've, I've done in terms of the changes with um, packing the corals. And yeah, I think, um, I think it's just better safe than sorry. And I, you know, yeah, I spent some money, but I think it was a, 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 an investment that was uh, well worth it to kind of give me some peace of mind if something is delayed by UPS, that if it's gonna be sitting there for a couple of days, that I'm pretty confident it will uh, survive when you, um, you know, when I have uh, oxygen and activated carbon in those bags. You know, and I think another thing that really helps, uh, and, I, and I always try to uh, tell customers to really seriously consider having the frags held at a UPS customer center for a pickup, that will cut down on the transit time. Usually frags will arrive sooner at the destination city if they're held at a UPS customer center for pickup and uh, they won't also have to be bouncing around on the back of a uh, delivery truck. So it's one less journey of the, um, one less leg of the journey that the frags have to travel on. So I think that's always a, uh, that's always a good policy. I also um, pretty much will only ship on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. I will not ship on Thursdays because if the package is delayed, you know, and it doesn't make it there Friday, then the customer's not gonna get it until Monday.
you know, and I don't think these shipping issues are going to go away. It's it's not going to get any easier. Um, when the pandemic started, shipping prices really went up a lot. There was just a lot going on with uh, with COVID, and it just impacted the industry t tremendously. Then, uh, you know, in the past year with the uh, increase in gas prices, shipping went up even more. So there's a lot of pressure on the uh, on the business of overnight shipping, freight shipping. So it's not going to get any cheaper. And that's, uh, you know, and I realize that. And that's why I wanted to make that investment in the um, in the equipment. But, you know, I think uh, part part of the reason why there's just been some intermittent issues with packages arriving on time is is uh, personnel issues so it's a uh, it's a very important topic I don't think a lot of people you know talk a lot about it so I just wanted to um, raise the visibility of what's been going on with me and hopefully um, you know improve the way I can get these animals to you folks on the other end so that's a recap of the changes that I've made to the way I ship corals if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe until next time be safe and be well later